Last video we started our breadth first search, now we need to try to complete it. So we had gotten to the point where we have our queue, we're in queuing our start location, and we have this while loop that's going to keep going while the queue isn't empty. Each time we pull off one element, we run through these offsets, which are the four different directions that we can go from a particular location, and then we have this big if. So what needs to go in this if? Well first, the location in x, in y needs to be in bounds. So in x has to be greater than or equal to zero, and in x needs to be less than our let's see, maze dot length, and in y needs to be greater than or equal to zero, and in y needs to be less than maze sub in x dot length just in case the maze isn't square. And there's one other condition here uh, that we can come up with at this point. You can't move into walls. So maze sub in x sub in y has to be equal to zero. Okay, so you're in bounds. Then we need to do another check. Well, if you got to the end, if in x is equal to the end x, and in y is equal to the end y, well somehow we need to signify that. Maybe we should keep track of whether or not we found a solution. So let's make a solution here. And our solution is going to be an option of list of int int. And that's going to start off with none. Now you'll notice that this, that this type here is exactly what we're returning. So it's actually quite simple to say at the bottom here we're going to give back solution and we're going to keep going while the queue is not empty and solution is empty. Okay, so while we don't have a solution uh, and, the, and there's stuff on the queue. So if the queue is empty, well, we have to stop and we're going to wind up returning none because that means we couldn't find our way there. If the solution becomes non-empty, well, that means that we found something. In fact, that's what's going to happen right here. Solution equals sum of our current, the new location in x, in y, const onto the steps that got us here. Else, well, if we didn't find the solution, then we need to add this location to the queue. Q -U -E -U -E dot in queue, and it's actually exactly what we just created, which is in x arrow in y cons steps. Because that's the thing that we're testing. Let's see. Oh, that should be an n. It turns out that this has a bug in it still, which is the fact that it would allow you to go, for example, from this corner down and then back up and then down and up and down and up. There's nothing that prevents us from going back to places that we've already been. And in order to prevent that, we're going to introduce a another variable in here. I'm gonna call it visited. And it's going to be a set of int int okay uh, that starts off empty so we haven't visited any place yet uh, except we did just put on this start location so let's go ahead and maybe put that on start x or arrow start y with a t so that's the one location that's on our queue we probably shouldn't ever go bother going back to it. Similarly here, if we're going to enqueue this, it should be added onto our set of things we visited. And we also don't want to go to a location. This if that was making sure we stayed in bounds, we didn't go into walls, should also check to make sure that we haven't visited this before. Okay. So, 
this is seems like a reasonably good breadth first search here. Uh, we kind of would be nice if we could test it. How are we going to do that? Well, one thing that we could do would be that we could actually make it so that our draw draws the maze. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do a fill, set that to color dot black. That way we can draw all of our walls. And we're so we're going to run through uh, first. Let's see. Let's go run through all of our um, squares in our maze. So for I in maze dot indices and then J in maze sub I dot indices. I want to check to see if the minus sign there if the value at that location is a zero or not. So we're going to do a few options here. So first, if maze sub i sub j, if it's zero, that's an open square, then I want to set gc dot fill to be equal to color dot, how about we go with white. Else, so if it's not an open square, then I'm going to do gc dot fill equals color dot black. And after we've set the color, I'm going to do gc dot fill rect and we need to decide how big we're going to draw each one of these. And I could put in a bunch of constants here, but I'd rather define something up here, a private val, how about box size equals, uh, we'll start off with 20 pixels, see if that's big enough. So then i times box size, comma j times box size, comma box size, comma box size. And we would need to have a properties panel here. So if prop panel dot is empty, we're going to build it. Prop panel dot get is what we give back in the end. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to have just a button that runs our breadth first search. So val, how about like our others, we'll make a vbox um, panel equals new vbox, and then prop panel equals sum of panel. And inside of our vbox, we can set it so we can run our breadth first search equals a new button of breadth first search we'll import button and now we need to make it so that our BFS causes this to happen on action equals an action event Oops. I want that to be an A, we import it, and of course that's not going to be happy until we add our import scalafx.includes.underscore, and now that works. So what needs to happen in here? Well, we are going to, at this point, just call breadth first search. Okay. And it returns something to us, but we're not drawing it right now. We'll have to deal with that later. Okay, so here's our drawing program. We didn't make it yet, so we can add a maze. 
Well, how do we do that? Let's go back to our drawing main. Remember, we have this creators in here, so actually adding a maze is not all that hard. We just say maze, and it should take a drawing and produce a new draw maze of D. Now if we run this, we can add a drawable, make it a maze, and there's our maze. Um, and if I were to click the maze, hmm, we didn't override two string, and it's not giving me my button. Oh, I don't think I ever added the button to the contents. <laughs> so let's see, we make our panel here panel dot panel dot children equals a list of BFS we were able to see the maze but I'd actually like to be able to see maybe uh, the path that winds up being our shortest path so how about we make a var for that as well. I'll just call it, how about we call it, short path. And it's going to be an option of that list of int int none. Okay. We can talk about whether that's really what we want this to be in just a second. But that is what's given back by our shortest path. So we can take this and we can match, actually we can do a for each on it. So if we actually get back a list, then I'm going to set shortest path equal to the list. And I'm going, did I call it short path? Yep. What is this unhappy with? Do I have a type issue? Oh. An option of list. So list should be a list. Oh, and of course this would then become a sum. Actually, technically. Because I made that an option, I don't even need to for each this. We can just do that. Drawing dot draw. Tell the drawing to draw itself. And the last thing that we have to do inside of here is for the things that were going to be open squares, they won't all be open. Uh, well, they won't all be drawn in white. If short path, let's see, short path is actually how about we do make it so that our short path is a list and it will just be an empty list if we don't have anything because I need to draw it'll be helpful if I draw if I'm drawing something an empty list works quite well there so then this will become a for each Short path equals LST. We redo the drawing. That matches there. I don't. Okay. So when I hit the button, we should calculate the shortest path. If it finds one, it should set that to be shortest path, and then we'll draw it. And then up in here, I can say if short path dot contains our element, which would be i, j, then we're going to give color dot, how about green, else we'll use white. A 
Let's see what that looks like. Transform at drawable of a maze. We expand this, we get our maze, and there's our shortest path through the maze. Okay, so we have this working reasonably well. There are multiple things we could clean up. Overwriting the two string would be nice, but we have demonstrated that we have a shortest path breadth first search. It looks like it's working on this maze. Obviously we can do more testing of it, but it definitely shows you a particular algorithm where cues are useful as a data structure.